and again a uh, interesting question from the community mohit basically i uh, created a poll on my telegram channel and this question came up uh, like very frequently there are a lot of individuals who want to know so let's say there are individuals who have a career gap in uh, right let's say 5 to 6 not very very specific with like 5 to 6 years but a uh, right. long career gap and now they want to skill up uh, into sales force and want to start, get a job in sales force ecosystem so what are your suggestion how should they prepare uh, because as you know the company a uh, little bit uh, restrain themselves to get only the fresh talent so how they can secure a job you know this is very very good question you know i was uh, i was thinking through this right um, i think the you know we we already have a lot of resources on trailhead.com like trailhead.salesforce.com um so i think uh, you know skilling it like going there right uh, skilling yourself um like specifically starting with admin topics right here's the thing right i mean companies will look for all sorts of people right um i don't think um you know a lot of companies at least restrict themselves to uh you know freshers or experienced people i mean all that they are looking for is whether you can do the job or not on a daily basis yeah. right so i think uh, you know you should uh, i think that is where the mindset should change a bit is like okay it's not that you know only freshers will be hired or experienced individuals should be hired as long as i have the skill set right i should be able to um sort of easily uh, get to the to the job right so so the first thing is getting that skill set and i think trailhead is the right resource right and i think you'll start with admin like you know start yeah. working through uh, samples like okay how do i create a developer edition org you know try to create an app yourself uh, learn all the administration things that are there in salesforce like creating page layouts you know creating simple objects and fields and relationships um you know uh, also building a little bit of apps using app builder and things like that so once you get through that right um you know start looking for okay what administration jobs um if you are not able to like crack through right uh, talk mm-hmm. to uh, some experienced individuals to find out what they do on their day to day basis um mm-hmm. you know and furthermore if they are interested in a developer role you know go and learn some developer related topics if they already have some programming background it shouldn't be that hard to learn apex and lwc so as long as you kind of learn um these skill sets and you can show them right uh you know one of the best things i would say is to have in the resume is a project you know mm-hmm. that you have in your developer edition org like you know on your interview day if you show that developer edition mm-hmm. org and show this is what i built with lwc this is what i did with apex and if you if the you are able to answer the interviewer question on how you approached it that yeah. pretty much actually locks the deal for you you know it's, it's it's pretty simple like if they understand okay you are able to work on this right i mean let me tell you something it's something really interesting right about salesforce um so one of the things that we often see in salesforce world is there's not a lot of developer talent you know you won't believe this when i when i say this um if you look at like salesforce developers they are paid really well you know uh, be it in india or be it in us uh, you know mm-hmm. in europe australia um you know speak about the world salesforce developers are everywhere and they are paid really handsome salary you know um and honestly there's not a lot of talent actually you know there's there's scarcity of talent um every partner looks for salesforce developers right um, i cannot say for admins i think admins is also same thing you know every company needs admins and um you know developers and architects right um but i i, I can easily say that you know there's not a lot of developer talent so as long as you are able to master these skills and show to the uh, you know show in your job interviews you should pretty much be able to get job you know irrespective of uh, whether you come from you know whatever background or some of your break or so i think it should uh, it will definitely not matter as long as you you can show the commitment and uh, any interviewer doesn't go for like uh, this individual should know uh, everything for 100% right Absolutely but not. Uh, it it's just like okay how uh, when when i interview going to judge someone like okay whether this person if i assign a particular task to him or her uh, whether they are able to do that or not that's the quality they want to go for i guess uh, so yeah okay. definitely uh, also if you can showcase your work uh, like post on linkedin what you are working on or what you are building let's say uh, you are talking about lwc so i, I think that's a add on where you can like yeah. showcase 
I built it this and uh, yeah, if I get uh, LWC task, I can, okay, I, I'll already work on it. So it totally depends on uh, your interview, uh, where the interviewer is going to judge you, like, okay, whether you are going to uh, take the challenge and complete your job. So if you are able to do that, I don't think so. Uh, a career gap will going to uh, doom you or make any uh, obstacle in your career until unless you are doing, you have the skill set and you are able to show uh, what the interviewer going, uh, is looking for. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what is critical here is sometimes, you know, the, the challenge here, what I feel and this I'm relating because, you know, I was on a paternity leave this year for like two or three months and then I came out of the paternity leave. So after three months, right, like even you, when you come back fresh into, into the job, right, that's that's where it gets really difficult, right? I'm, I mean, imagine three months I had to face this. Now, so somebody's coming after five years, let's say, you know, uh, with all due respect, right? Some somebody went through, uh, you know, they were uh, taking care of the kids, and uh, you know they were not able to focus on career. Now the the kids are grown up, right? So now they want to focus back on the on their career, right? So I think the challenge will be, uh, you know, fighting with yourself a bit uh, because uh, uh, you know it's it's not easy to you know um, start getting into that groove, right? So it takes some time, uh, you know, maybe. You know, you start slow, as I said, you know, you build your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe you do one trailhead module per day. Maybe you decide, yeah. okay, next day I want to do one more. And you slowly build up that thing, right? And slowly pick up your pace. Um, yeah. You know, and after some time, like, you know, after you put in like six months of, I think Salesforce development, if you really like, you know, even if you don't have like, the best part about Salesforce is like the barrier for entry is very small, you yeah. know? It's yeah. not that you're learning like an algorithm or a math equation or anything like that. The tool itself is so simple and uh, it's designed such a way that it makes sense, right? So yes. I think once they go through trailhead, right? I would say like, you know, on an average three to four months of good preparation should be enough to get you the skill set. Yeah. Maybe you might need a couple of more months to like polish and understand what type of questions are being asked in the interviews. Is this is going to help those individuals who are going to look an answer like how should I prepare or what should I need to do if I have a career gap? So I think this answer will help them. You know, and there are a lot of great innovations that are happening across Salesforce products. And one of the key things that I feel uh, we are blessed, uh, you know, for considering we work in Salesforce technologies, Salesforce is sort of architected for all sort of environment. Like, for example, right, if you think about the current situation, right, where you need to be efficient, you know, there, there needs to be a lot of work done by less amount of people. And that's going to happen through automation. And Salesforce technology is easy to work with. You know, you have products like Flows, uh, where you can like quickly build you know, your process automation so you can automate your industry, right? So, so that way, I, I think Salesforce is architected for these kind of situations, right? You know, I don't see, you know, cloud technology sort of stopping by and Salesforce will be the key, key holder just because of the product portfolio we have. So, so I'm really confident, uh, you know, at least in my opinion that, uh, you know, Salesforce will, will continue to thrive even in this environment.